those of you that only have a minute, let's run through quickly the pros and cons and the final summary. First, the pros. Great cutouts on this cage, it's very ergonomic, easy to use. The screws are now Allen screws instead of coin screws, which is a nice change. The Allen wrench comes with it and is stored in a magnetic holder to the built-in handle. There's an extremely versatile carbon fiber 15 millimeter rod. It can be used to mount follow focus, shoulder stock, or mounting any other sort of external accessories and can be mounted in three different ways. There's an anti-twist camera stops in the front of the cage, an anti-twist plate mount, mic input retaining thumb screw, reversible handle with very secure cold shoe, solid single piece of aluminum design, very well crafted, padded leather strap for right hand works well when shooting handheld or to keep a grip on the camera when not using the top handle. The cages are designed specifically for the Panasonic GH4 and GH3, Sony A7S, Canon 5D Mark III and 7D Mark II, and the Samsung NX1. Cons, no HDMI retaining mechanism, and you need an Allen wrench with you, and it's possible for it to fall out of the magnetic holder. Overall conclusion, this is a fantastic cage, sort of in the middle market, which makes it very, very good value for money, very good build quality, very versatile, and super useful. Those of you that want the details, stick around. Veravon has a new version of their Armor cages for a variety of different cameras. In this case, we're looking at the one for the GH4 and the GH3. This is their Armor 2, and uh, they've done a really nice job. I have the Armor 1 and have been using it for uh, probably about, let's see, I think I got it back in November of last year, somewhere in that time frame. It's been an awesome cage. I love it. I actually originally for my GH4 bought the Fugen Hanu, I think it was, but the Armor from Veravon was a lot better in a couple of different ways. And now they come out with a version two, which has some slight changes to it, which are kind of interesting. Let's take a look. Before we dive too much into the new one, let me just give you a quick tour for those of you who haven't seen the older version of the armor. Um, does have this removable handle up top, which has a uh, sort of a, I guess that is, I don't know what you call that, a coin <laughs> screw, but you use a coin to tighten and loosen it. And you can not only remove the handle if you wanted to, but you can also reverse it. So really pretty nice flexibility there. Um, some of the other things that had this locking kind of stop up front so you could get the camera in there just perfectly. On the bottom, the quarter 20 locking screw was again, the type you'd use with a coin or tighten with a toy coin. It also had this Arca Swiss kind of wedge down here, which um, never got, I mean, it wasn't a huge deal for me. I don't have Arca Swiss and I don't use Arca Swiss mounts, but it uh, had that. And so when you had the camera all rigged up and, you know, you had various things around the cage and you set it down, sometimes it got a little tippy, but not a huge, huge deal. And then they also, on the Pro version, had this attachable, uh, adjustable handle, which was kind of cool if you're doing some hand holding, a lot of hand holding shooting. And so, for example, you could adjust it in a variety of different ways. So you could get some low shots, you get high shots, a lot of different uh, interesting things. I'm not a huge handheld shooter, um, so I didn't use this a ton. I did use it a few times and found it really, really nice. Very comfortable, classy kind of build here. It's a leather strap with some nice uh, foam on the bottom. But in any case, um, overall, really like this. Oh yeah, one other thing. They did have the, if you're using Man Manfrotto plates, they do have the locking pin, a space for the locking pin. So you would uh, put your quarter 20 in here and the locking pin here. So you'd have an anti-twist type of uh, mechanism or setup there. So really nice cage, really have enjoyed using it a lot. Now the new version here has a couple of tweaks that they change. Oh, actually I should say before we go into the new one, it did have an HDMI locking mechanism here, but I didn't find it, it wasn't very useful and I didn't, I ended up not using it most of the time. The reason why is it's really, what it does is you kind of loop the cable through there and then kind of twist it back. You need to have a certain kind of HDMI cable to make that work, and it's gotta be a pretty thin gauge. And uh, so I ended up never really using it. The other nice thing that they had up here was this uh, locking screw for the mic input on the camera itself. So if you were running a mic into the camera, had this locking screw to kind of hold it in place, and there was this recessed screw here to kind of fine tune it and get it just right. So you weren't putting strain on the cable itself, or on the jack of the camera, I should say. And uh, that's kind of a cool feature as well. So when I ran my road link into the camera directly, sometimes I would use that. So that was kind of cool. The new version has a few different changes. First of all, they don't have the, you can still use the Pro 
grip here that is adjustable if you want, but instead you can actually just attach, and this is how it comes with the um, strap just attached to the cage itself. You have all the perfect cutouts again, like on the original for the memory card, for the um, for the screen over here. Let's show you. You could actually rotate it. Now this one has a little bit of a, a thing that gets in the way and we'll talk about in just a minute, but it has, it gives you lots of flexibility in terms of how you want to turn that. Of course, the cutout for the battery so you don't have to unrig everything. Again, still the anti-twist stops up here up front so it fits the camera perfectly. And uh, still has the same uh, mechanism for locking the audio mic input which is a nice thing. But then there is this, this is new, 15 millimeter carbon rod here, carbon fiber rod, which is adjustable. And <laughs> as you just saw there, I just knocked it off. Um, now, instead of the screws all being the, kind of the coin titan, they actually are Allen wrenches. So even the quarter 20 on the bottom to attach the camera is uh, an Allen wrench. Same with the cold shoe mount there. Um, let's see, same with the handle attach the knob here that you can attach the handle with and reverse the handle with. So all of that's done with the Allen wrench. The Allen wrench actually fits in here and attaches via magnets. Um, I did knock it out there. I haven't had that experience when actually shooting. <laughs> They're pretty good magnets and so they hold it in pretty nicely. Just like on the last version, they have the cold shoe mount. And this is a really nice cold shoe in terms of the way it works. It, it actually squishes from the sides and holds things on very, very securely. So that's cool. But then getting back to this 15 millimeter rod. So the idea here in its default position is that you could attach a follow focus unit here and uh, be able to do follow focus on your, you know, as you're shooting. However, it's more versatile than that. You can actually adjust this. So just with the hand knob here, you can adjust this any angle you want. So 360 degrees here. Additionally, by loosening that, you can slide this out and it can also attach on the handle. So if you wanted something there as sort of, you know, either to attach external accessories up here, or if you wanted to use that as another kind of cross handle, that works. And then also down here. So really kind of cool. You can do a lot with that. And one of the things that I thought was really cool, and I have to look into options here, I don't have a follow focus yet, that's still on my list of things to get, but, um, so I could use it for that. But what's also cool that they showed is you can flip it around this other way, like this. And actually I would do it just down a little bit. And then get an accessory that would be kind of a shoulder stock. So you would put this up against your shoulder to stabilize it. You could pull the screen out and so again, imagine a shoulder stock here and you could put that up against your shoulder and then you've got your hand in the, the strap here. So really kind of cool, very, very tight rig if you're gonna do something like that with a shoulder stock. And that'd be really handy for me because when I do, I am not the steadiest shooter in terms of hand holding and being able to have something that would work with a shoulder stock would be uh, just really amazing. And um, so that was really thought out, well thought out, I thought. Um, they did, to do this, they did have to do away with the HDMI retainer, which I, as I mentioned before, not something I typically used anyway. So anyway, that, I'm pretty excited about this. I'll probably do a follow-up as I kind of kit this out a little bit more and we get you know something working maybe as a shoulder stock or as a follow focus on this. So uh, there you go. That's the Veravon Armor Cage 2. And they also make it not only for the Panasonic GH4, but also for, as you can see here, Canon 5D Mark III, Panasonic GH3 and GH4, 7D, 7D Mark II, Samsung NX1, and Sony A7S. So a variety of options out there. Hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave me any questions you have down below, and we'll get back to you again soon when we sort of update things with this one. Mm -hmm.